All right, this is the extraction of a 204 due to a tooth abscess. And uh, in this case, you want to extend the flap, including 206, so the second premolar. So now I'm just making stab incisions along the tooth. And I'm here doing a vertical releasing incision that goes all the way from the mucosa and past the mucogingival line. So you can see I'm I'm going past the mucogingival line from into the mucosa. You always want to cut downwards towards uh, towards the teeth, the tooth. Now I'm creating a stab incisions on the lingual aspect as well. So I'm keeping, keeping the scalpel parallel to the tooth and adding like a 15 degree angle to make your incision into the sulcus. And when you have to release the gingiva off of the tooth, I always start at the corner and I twist. And this part is the most tricky, the mesial part here. So you want nice sharp periosteal elevators and you want to do twisting motion. So keep a very firm pressure against the tooth or against the bone and do a twisting motion while you push. So twist and push. Okay. So the place you should be careful is at the mucogingival line, so where the gingiva meets the mucosa. That's where there's a risk of you can poke through the flap, actually. You can penetrate the flap. So what I like to do is go underneath here and then move sideways. Okay. So I'm just working my way back and see the periosteal elevator is up underneath the mucosa. And there are many flap designs to remove a tooth, to make a flap. And, and, and most of them are acceptable. You know, in this case, I'm including these two teeth. And once you put the flap back, the gingiva will, will reattach to the teeth. So just working slowly, firm push against the bone and twisting motion. And you want to get everything off of the bone. So all the soft tissue should be pried away, pried off of the bone. So now I'm getting a nice exposure. Okay. Don't worry about the infraorbital nerve and, and um, artery it will it will move away with the flap if you scrape against the bone it will stay within the flap so you will not damage it by any means so see now i have the nice bone here and there are some bony changes here because there's a chronic periapical uh, problem creating like a assist probably in this tooth but you will see. So the next part just get nice exposure. And the next part is going to be drilling away the bone from the tooth root. So for doing that I use a straight cross cut tapered fissure burr. Which is called a 701L or surgical length. So it's a little bit longer burr than normal and it's very nice. I use the side of this burr to drill away the bone. You can use a round burr if you like, but in this case I feel that I can 
you get much more surface area out of this the spur so you can remove bone quicker and I also like to create some grooves in front and back of this two so mesial and distal to this two fruit and I will show you in a little bit So just remove a lot of bone. Actually, you can remove all the way up to the apex if you really need to. So you can go all the way up. You can just make your flap bigger and you can remove a lot more. But now I'm just using sweeping motions to outline the root. So I'm just keep keeping removing buckle bone to expose more of the root. And I like to keep it very clean. So I like to remove everything from my root so I can see what is what. So here I just felt that the flap was a little bit too tight. I just try to loosen it a little bit extra so I can remove even more bone. Because this is a this is a very long route. And this bone right here is usually not this thick. But this tooth had a problem with the periapical area, so there's a there's a lucency and there's like a, uh, a cyst or an abscess or a granuloma. These are histological um, diagnoses. So you're, not, you're never really sure if it's a cyst, a granuloma or an abscess if you see a periapical lucency. In this case, it's probably a, probably a, a cyst due to uh, chronic irritation. So now I'm creating my grooves distal to the root and mesial to the root and you can see here. And the reason I do this is I want to outline the root with a groove where I can put my luxator in. And I repeat on the mesial aspect, I create. You can go pretty deep here. There are no structures that you can you can damage. So you can go, you can do, go at least a half centimeter in a large breed dog like this into the bone on the mesial aspect. So here I'm going for a, uh, a little bit larger a luxator that fits with the tooth. And this, this place is very dense, there's a lot of dense bone right here on the mesial aspect. So if you can get it in there and twist and you see if you get any movement of the root. So jiggle, so I'm jiggling, wiggling it while I've put firm pressure and see right now I'm able to get it quite loose actually already. 
So I don't have to destroy my wrist doing a lot of luxation because I removed so much bone. So now it's quite loose, just want to get it a little more loose. Perfect. And you want to twist and pull. And you can see some aligning, some material here on the root tip. And this is due to the chronic irritation because this tooth was dead. So this is, this is not normal. So in this case I'm using the scissor to debride the edge, make it ready for suturing. This is a curved scissor, very nice. And now I want to release it a little bit, this flap, because it's pulling, slightly pulling back when I place it onto the alveolus. So you want the flap to stay where you put it. And if you pull back, you need to release a little bit. So in this case, I go to the corner here and I just open up and I release and I see the white inner part, that's the periosteum. And you want to go between the periosteum and the mucosa. And put in the scissor and cut. And you will get a lot of release here from doing this technique. I just put the I take the flap down and check on the outside that I'm not accidentally uh, poking through. So as you can see when I'm placing the flap over the defect it stays quite nicely. And this means that we can go ahead and suture. So here I'm using a football diamond burr, medium grit, to smooth the edges of the bone. So they want you want them to feel smooth by the touch. So in this case I'm using a monocryl 4-0 on a reverse cutting needle. I like the suture to be dyed purple so I can see it in the oral cavity. Lots of these monocryl ones, they are undyed so they are clear and they are can be difficult to see. So I like the purple version. I like to do four throws for each knot and leave the ends around four millimeters, three millimeters long. 